Hello and welcome to today's lesson on IV graphs, which is part of the electricity topic in AQAA level physics. So in today's lesson, what we're going to do is we're going to look at how to understand to construct IV graphs of different components. So if we've been successful and we've learned in today's lesson, we should be able to draw IV graphs of different uh, non ohmic conductors, interpret the IV graphs and understand their importance in derived electrical concepts, and then understand how to carry out an experiment uh, to draw uh, IV graphs of non ohmic conductors. So in this lesson, we're going to be looking at the following part of the AQAA level physics specification 3.5.1.2 current voltage characteristics. So in previous lessons, we've looked at VI graphs plotted for Ohm's law. So when the potential difference is graphed against the current for an ohmic conductor, well, the following graph will be achieved. Now on a VI graph where V is on the Y axis and I the current is on the X axis, the gradient shows the resistance of the conductor because we know gradient is the change in Y over the change in X. So in this case, it would be the potential difference over the current, which we know uh, when we know R equals V over I is equal to therefore the resistance. So this, this particular graph shows us that the conductor has a constant gradient, so therefore we'll have a constant resistance. Now it also shows that there's a direct proportionality between potential difference and current because the line of best fit is a straight line through the origin. Now it's also important to note that direct proportionality can also be shown mathematically as the values of current and potential difference could either be multiplied or divided by each other and therefore the value achieved should be the same for all sets of current and potential difference values used if they are directly proportional. Now in addition to that you must be aware of the difference between VI and IV graphs. Now on an IV graph the gradient shows not the resistance of the conductor rather the conductance of the conductor or 1 over resistance because the gradient is the change in Y over the change in X so it's current over potential difference so therefore it's 1 over resistance or the conductance. So on an IV graph, this gradient is constant, similar to the VI graph for an ohmic conductor. So ohmic conductors have a constant conductance and a constant resistance. But what about our non-ohmic conductors? Now, there are many different electrical components which do not follow Ohm's law. So this means that the current through the device and the potential difference across the device are not directly proportional. So an example of a non-ohmic conductor is a filament bulb. Now, you must be aware that these components produce non-linear IV and VI graphs. Another example of a non-ohmic conductor will be a diode. And a further example of a non-ohmic conductor will be a light dependent resistor and a thermistor. Now it's important that you must be able to sketch, plot and interpret VI and, and IV graphs for different non-ohmic conductors. So remember the difference between the two types of graphs plotted from current and potential difference. So if you've got an IV graph with current on the Y and potential difference on the X, it tells you that the gradient is in fact the conductance, whilst if you've got a VI graph with V on the Y axis and current I on the X axis, the gradient is in fact the resistance. Now it's important to also note that we covered IV graphs at GCSE whilst the VI graph is a concept new for A-level physics. Now as we said before non-ohmic conductors are conductors where Ohm's law does not apply to the component. The current and the potential difference are not proportional to each other. So the line on the IV graph and the VI graph is not linear. So examples of our non-ohmic conductors Conductors include the filament lamp, which is shown with this particular graph, the semiconductor diode, shown with this particular graph, and the LDR, shown with the particular graph on the right hand side. Now, you must consider the IV characteristics of non ohmic conductors. Now, in designing an electrical circuit, we need to know how components will react when the PD across them changes in order to ensure that the circuit performs its intended function under all circumstances. Now, in general, the IV characteristics is our PD current or IV graph which shows how the current flowing through a component changes as the potential difference across it is increased. So like we said before the gradient of the line is 1 over resistance so the shallower the line the greater the resistance of the electrical component and the steeper the line the lower the resistance of the component. Now the first IV graph we can consider is for an ohmic conductor. So the current through an ohmic conductor under constant physical 
physical conditions is directly proportional to the potential difference across it. So this gives us a straight line through the origin for the IV graph, so it indicates to us that the resistance is constant for the material. So metallic conductors in general are ohmic conductors. Now the next IV graph we've got to consider is for a filament lamp or filament bulb. Now the IV characteristics for a filament lamp is a curve that starts steep but gets shallower as the potential difference rises. So when the current flowing through the lamp increases, the temperature of the filament lamp also increases. Now this process also increases the resistance of the lamp. This is because when a current flows through the lamp, some of that electrical energy is transferred into the vibrational energy of the lattice by collisions. So this means that the lattice vibration further and makes it more difficult for the charge carrying electrons to flow through that lattice. So this causes the resistance to increase. Now for most resistors there's a limit to the amount of current that can flow through them. So this means that the more current indicates an increase in temperature, which gives an increase in resistance, which then will cause the current to decrease again, which is why in our IV graph for a filament lamp or filament bulb it levels off at a high current. Now diodes, which include LEDs, light emitting diodes, are made from semiconductors and are designed to allow for current to flow in one direction only. So this is because diodes are polarised, they only let the current flow in one direction in an electrical circuit. Now we call forward bias the direction in which the current is allowed to flow. So LEDs and diodes need to be forward biased to conduct in an electrical circuit. Now most diodes uh, require Require a potential difference of about 0.6 volts in the forward direction or forward bias before they will conduct. Now it's also important that we call this the threshold voltage. Now in reverse bias the resistance of the diode is very high and the current that flows through it is minimal. So let's just summarise what we've looked in today's lesson at. That resistance is R equals V over I. That for an ohmic conductor, semiconductor diode and a filament lamp, we can draw the IV graphs. Now Ohm's law is a special case where I is directly proportional to V under constant physical conditions. And we can treat our ammeters and voltmeters as ideal. Now you can have questions on your exam where either I or V is on the horizontal axis of the characteristic graph. So if you've been successful and learnt in today's lesson, you should be able to draw IV graphs of various non-ohmic conductors, interpret IV graphs and understand their importance in deriving electrical concepts, and carry out an experiment to draw IV graphs for non-ohmic conductors. So thank you for watching this particular lesson on IV graphs, which is part of the electricity topic in AQAA level physics. Thank you very much and have a lovely day.